All right, this is the second time I've done this video because the first time it was just giving me heebie-jeebies and I just kept scratching and itching and uh, I'm going to try to do it now um, where it won't be bothering me so much. We're going to start off with a little history of ticks and their life cycle. And there are about 18 thousand different types of ticks. They've been around for 147 million years. Um, they do all sorts of things. Ticks have ticks that uh, predate on them. So don't feel bad. Even the ticks have ticks. Um, ticks are in the same uh, group as spiders. They have eight legs. Um, the interesting thing is their, their larvae only have six legs. And they get the uh, other pair of legs after they molt. They molt their, their whole shell or skin and uh, grow into the next stage. They go from uh, eggs to larvae to nymph to adult. And um, the deer tick, it takes two years. For some of the other ticks, it takes three years. But we'll kind of concentrate on the deer tick, the Rocky Mountain spotted tick, and, and the, some of the dog ticks because they're the ones that cause us the most disease and the most problems. Ticks are opportunistic. They will uh, attach to almost any warm-blooded animal to, to take blood. Uh, they, are, they eat exclusively blood and they can get it from any warm-blooded mammal. Their saliva, which they pump into your body, it gives them an anesthetic so that you can't feel it. It gives them a, an anti-inflammatory so that it doesn't uh, raise up and get obvious and it gives a uh, anticoagulant so the blood flows uh, freely into their mouths. Um, all of those properties are very useful to modern medicine and the pharmaceutical industry is working on finding out how that can be used for uh, heart attack, stroke, um, things like that. So they're not all bad but they're, they're creepy. Tick habitat is basically leaf litter. Um, they're very prone to freezing to death. Um, anything below zero degrees will kill them. For They can only survive for maybe an hour or two. So um, when it gets cold in winter, um, they need to be under leaf litter where it doesn't get that cold. Um, usually they survive as an egg through the winter and then they'll hatch out either in um, early spring or any warm day in winter. If, if it gets to be a warm day, they may hatch out and look for their first host. And obviously, if they're on a warm-blooded host, they will um, survive the winter. Because they hatch in leaf litter, um, the larvae usually attach to something small. Again, warm-blooded, so mice, birds, voles, shrews, uh, moles, whatever small dogs that roll in the roll in the leaf litter those are for the for the larvae now once the larvae gets a blood meal it drops off and it molts and it becomes a nymph and the nymphs will then uh, they may climb climb up on a piece of grass or on a little stick or something like that and they'll get something maybe a little larger they might get a rabbit or a fox or a uh, you know, a squirrel, something bigger than the mouse or the, the, the mole or something like that. Because they can, they can climb a little higher up, they're a little bigger. Um, they'll get into those creatures, get a blood meal, and they will drop off and um, molt again and become an adult. And the adults are quite good sized and they can climb up, they can climb up uh, bushes, they can climb up quite a ways. However, they're not going to waste a lot of energy climbing to the top of a tree and falling on you. Ticks don't fall on people. They don't have a way to really sense that you're there. Um, they, they just wait when they... But anyways, they'll, they'll reach up and quest their arms and try to grab onto whatever happens to, to walk by. And, and again, a dog, cat, uh, deer... Uh, cow, whatever. Um, if they can get a hold of it, they'll, they'll get on it and then they'll crawl into a spot where, um, where they'll uh, attach and bite and get a blood meal. 
So again, their primary habitat is the edge of the forest where leaf litter and stuff is, is heavy, but where a path may be where people or pets or animals might run back and forth looking for food. So 90% of, 99% of your ticks are raised through mice and small mammals, okay? So if you've got snakes, hawks, owls, your tick population is gonna be pretty low. So you wanna really promote those animals. There's a lot of variability on ticks, on how long they uh, stay on you and whether where they go and what they do. I can't play with you now. Some ticks, as soon as they touch you and they know you're a warm body, they get right into you. Uh, the uh, Lone Star tick, which is a fairly good sized tick with a white dot in the middle of the body, um, that tends to run right onto you and grab you and, and hold on, bite you. They may even, you may even feel them bite you. And um, they bite you and then they drop right off. Um, deer ticks may wander around looking for a good spot where they can hide and burrow in and, and take a few days to feed, which is one of the reasons they say that like Lyme disease and some of the diseases that uh, deer ticks carry, um, it takes 36 to 48 hours to actually get it into your body. Um, so let's get into taking ticks off. Um, to take a tick off, you want to grab it as close to the skin as possible. You don't want to get the body of the tick, you want to get the mouth parts of the tick that are in the body. And I have a number of ways to do that, a number of tools. They, this will all be on my web page. There will be some links below for uh, some of the uh, tick removal tools. So, but if you really want to know about ticks and stuff, there's a treatise. The, the Connecticut Agricultural Department did a whole study on ticks, did the whole life cycles and everything. That will all be on my web page. So you need to go to my web page, goingnowherefastrv.com, all one word going nowhere fast rv.com and there's uh files from my computer uh all sorts of documents there that um look for the tick document from connecticut so let's go in and i'll show you some of the tools for removing ticks and preventing tick bites okay these are some of the tick removal tools that can be used and I'll start with these right here are the tools not to be used. These are standard daily use tweezers and they are too big, too fat on the tips and these of course are for pulling eyebrows. <laughs> These are a woman's eyebrow tweezers and if you grab the tick with that tip it would squish him and force all the juice in the tick into the wound. So you don't want to use those. This is a very nice kit that comes in this little pouch and it's got a tick remover tool where you just slide that into the tick, under the tick, and pop them right out. And those work amazingly easy. But for ones that are really bad, they've got an extremely sharp set of tweezers, two sets. These are very sharp and they're at an angle, so you can hold them up off the, the person or the dog or the cat or whatever. And, and grab the tick. And that whole kit comes in this little thing so you can carry it um, hiking or something with your hiking clothes or your hiking gear. And that's pretty neat. I just tested these out. These are called Tick Check and they come in three sizes. Um, I just used the very smallest one on a Kila. And we got this teeny tiny tick out that was totally embedded. But again, 
it works like the other one. You slide this under the tick and just pop them out. And um, it works really well. Um, I was surprised how well they work. And they come with a card, tells you how to use it, um, where ticks should be, what kind of tick it might be, which is kind of neat. They also promote getting the tick tested and analyzed, and um, I don't believe that's necessary, according to the CDC. This is kind of like your hiker's model that uh, looks kind of fancy. It's got a little ruler on the, on the side. Again, the, the problem with these is these are all different sizes. I think for my purpose, um, only the smallest one would ever be necessary. Um, it's got the tightest on the top and you just, just put that over them and slide it out, put that over and slide them off. And then what I have used over the past 15 to 20 years is um, I have a pair of, these are called mosquito forceps, which I can clamp onto the tick and, and uh, if, uh, if once I clamp onto them, uh, if a kilo jumps or runs away, they're still clamped. It's not like holding a pair of tweezers. But I also carry these tweezers with me, which are extremely sharp. They really uh, require a, a cover on the end or you're going to, you can stab yourself. Uh, I've stabbed myself all the way into my <laughs> base bone of my finger with those. Just, just getting them out of my car. They stay in my car and I always recommend a flashlight because especially if it's in the hair of the dog or cat or something it's kind of hard to find them but a flashlight can really help those are some tick things um, these will all be um, listed below in the in the description this is you know these are these are seven to ten dollars I think even this one which is beautiful stainless steel with a case and everything I think that was only ten dollars so Okay, now, what do you do about keeping the ticks off you? Um, well, the old recommendation was DEET um, insect repellents. And there's a off or repel 40% uh, DEET. And there's another one which is 30% DEET. Uh, off makes a 100% DEET. Um, the problem with DEET is it eats plastics, it just stains clothes, and it only lasts for three to four hours max. It's affected by sweat and exercise and all sorts of things. So DEET is not the best you can use, um, though it does. You can put it on your skin, and uh, if you're going to run around in the shorts and tall grass and, and skinny little socks, Maybe you want to eat, who knows. But I don't like to eat. It is carcinogenic. It is a, a DNA uh, disruptor. Um, so I, I don't like it. What we have found and have had great success with is this Sawyer's insect repellent. And this is, again, this will all be in the, this will be in the description below. Um, this is a permethrin's based this is a permethrin based uh, repellent the neat thing is that you get one of these bottles i spray a, an entire shirt long sleeve shirt if you never noticed i usually wear a long sleeve shirt um, a light a lightweight dress shirt and um, long pants I have some real lightweight long pants that are also, you can take them apart and turn them into shorts. And I will spray the entire pants and shirt with that stuff and then let it hang to dry. And according to Sawyer's, that'll last three weeks, including putting the stuff through the laundry. But it works for mosquitoes, it works for ticks, it works for chiggers. It does an amazing job of uh, keeping the bugs off you. The neat thing is that if you see a tick on a piece of clothing that has been sprayed with this stuff, you'll see it kind of shriveling up and dying in front of your eyes. It's really cool, even though it's two or three weeks old. <laughs> uh, 
it's, uh, it has a lot of stay power. Now, permethrin is also labeled as a potential carcinogen. So you don't really want to put it on your skin. You don't want to spray it in your, in your hair, on your neck, or things like that. You got to put it on clothing, let it dry. So it's pretty weak, but it, it works amazingly well. I really like this stuff, and uh, I really expect you to buy it. And that bottle right there, the single bottle, I think, is $9. And the double, I think, is 18 So, I mean, it doesn't matter if you buy one or two, but... Um, I usually soak my clothes so they're dripping, which they don't recommend, <laughs> and then let them dry out on the deck. But that's uh, my answer to repellents. All right, now, every day I give him a good head rub and a good neck rub, and he likes it. And we go into his cheeks and under his eyes and above his head and into his ears and we look for ticks. So he has been sprayed with the permethrins and so he doesn't get any on any place that's easy to find. Where he does get them is on his belly which it's hard to spray his belly. And so in this area, excuse him please, where I haven't been able to spray. And these things that may look like ticks, these are not, these are nipples. Don't try to pull those off because he doesn't like it. <laughs> but yeah, I know you got to move parts out of the way. It's easier on a girl, but actually they get things in places that shouldn't be anyways. But this area has not been sprayed because I sprayed him sitting up and, uh, so I didn't get in here real good. Um, so he did get a couple of ticks in here a couple times. And uh, I took them off. Now, the other area that is really hard to spray is between his toes. And you have to really spray them one at a time. And, you know, most dogs are pretty sensitive on their toes. And this is the gentlest dog in the world. He will chew on my hand in the gentlest manner to tell me he don't like anything, but he doesn't give me a hard time. There he is. We found him. One teeny tiny little tick. Let me see if I, if I can get him can on. can be used. And this is a really tiny tick. So we're going to see if we can get him with this little tiny thing. And I don't think we're going to. Oh, actually, that worked just fine. That worked just fine, didn't it? So, there we go. We got a teeny tiny little tick caught in the thing. This is the tick we just took out of Aquila's uh, toes. He's a nice little tick. So, pulls him out without even hurting him, which to some degree is good. We just rolled this underneath him and popped him out. And he gets stuck in there, but now he crawled out, but he's engorged so he can't get around very good. He's coming after me. Ah! Okay. Now, going down the road isn't any risk to me and to him, especially if he's on leash and I keep him on the road. That's no risk. However, when we walk down here, that's a big risk. This is tall grass on either side of trees with a lot of leaf litter and stuff. That is where you get ticks. And when we go for a walk, almost every day. We go down there because that's where he does his business before we get on the trail because we don't want him pooping on the trail. He can, he can go down there, doesn't bother anybody, nobody knows it's there. But as you can see, this is tall grass. Perfect tick territory. If they can get from there to here. 
If you stay on the trails, on the paths, your risk is pretty low. And of all the ticks that were collected and tested, less than 30% actually had Lyme disease. So it's not real, uh, it's not, uh, you know, 100%, you got a tick bite, you're going to get it. And really, the, um, the reporting of tick bites and Lyme disease probably isn't very accurate. So there's probably a lot more tick bites and a lot less Lyme disease than you really think. So keep that in mind. So the last thing I want to tell you about ticks is tick checks. Um, ticks like to hide. So they like to get into cracks and crevices and uh, spaces where you can't find them. Um, hairy places are good places for them to hide, but other cracks and crevices, I have seen ticks come out of butt cracks, other cracks, armpits, back of knee, uh, cracks under boobs, all sorts of places. Um, especially on young children, behind the ears, in the hairline, um, belly buttons. Uh, it's very common to, to find ticks there. Now, some of the ticks that are more aggressive get in between the toes, bottom of the feet, places like that. So when you do go hiking, either alone or with somebody, if you've got a partner that can really scan over your body well, that's the best. Um, I, I'm looking for a partner like that right now. If somebody would like to get naked with me and scan for ticks, we can do that even if we don't go hiking. Um, but anyways, um, do spend some time looking for ticks after a hike. If you're doing a hike that's going to last more than three or four hours, you might want to make sure you wear light colored clothes because um, you can see the ticks if you brush up on something and you see ticks. White socks, uh, light colored pants, um, white sneakers, you can see ticks. And then when you get done after three or four hours, um, you know, look for ticks. Um, most likely, except for some ticks like the Lone Star tick, which immediately grabs hold and, and bites, um, you know, you'll probably find them all walking around on you, which is gross. There's no way to kill them. You cannot kill them with your fingers by clipping them or ticking them or, or anything like that. You can't slap them and get them off. You can flick them and they'll still be there. But today with COVID, the best way to get rid of them is to put a drop of uh, sanitizer on them, hand sanitizer, 70% alcohol. That will kill them in about two minutes. They are tough little characters. Don't think you can just kill them. They don't die easy, trust me. Um, I've put uh, iodine on them and they just walk away and they never die. Um, but alcohol seems to be a, what I use all the time. Um, so with hand sanitizer everywhere these days, carry a little bottle of hand sanitizer. Once you get the tick off, put it in a drop, put it in a bottle cap or something and use hand sanitizer. Don't put it on the tick while it's embedded. If the tick is attached, you want to get it off. Um, the worst thing you can do is irritate the tick while it's attached because it's going to spit all the blood back into you so it can shrink down and run away. And you don't want any of that stuff that it's taken out of you back in you. You want it to be gone. And the most important thing is to get those tweezers and clip the head so it can't, can't spit out anything and it can't do any more damage and then pull it away. And if you leave the mouth parts in there, it'll look like there's a little sliver in there. No big deal. If there was any bacteria or, or disease in those mouth parts, it was too late anyways. You know, you've already got whatever they had. But they, there's nothing in those mouth parts most of the time. Most of the time, the bacteria are way back in the tick and they have to get the full meal to get them stirred up and around and then they come forward to the mouth parts and uh, swim out into your bloodstream. So don't worry about that. Don't try to dig out the mouth parts or they'll fall out in a couple days. Um, but um, it is kind of gross. I always dig them out of Aquila and leave this big welt there, but he's a dog. Um, but don't be worried about going hiking and, and 
just be knowledgeable. Know that you have to take a look. Um, look for, you know, if, if you got this thing, spray your hat. Um, they love to get up under the hat. If you go through bushes and knock on the bushes, they may be in your hat and they can crawl around. Um, I have had ticks crawl down my face um, because I'm just gross and they won't attach in my head. But um, I hope you like this video. If you if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe. There's a lot of more educational videos I'll have. A lot of more hiking, camping videos. Some good places to camp, free or cheap. Um, I got some uh, a whole lot of plans, uh, reservations for the season. So come along with me, become a subscriber, click the little bell, get notified. Um, I tend to put a video up every Thursday morning, so you can watch it anytime during the weekend. I tend to look for comments um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So if you leave me a comment, I'll always respond. You're welcome to send me emails. That's on my page or on the uh, web page. Again, all the stuff that we've discussed in this video will be on my web page, goingnowherefastrv.com. Thank you for watching. I hope this wasn't too long. I could have gone another hour on ticks. They're, they're fascinating animals. I really like them. I just don't want them on me. Same as you. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.